Injury restricting him to six fights in 18 months or so, but interestingly, Lewis began his pro career at almost the same time, but he's had 15 fights and obviously does have a punch because his last contest was won. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you join us for the main event of the evening at a packed, fabulous Liverpool Olympia where tonight our officials appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control, the steward in charge, Mr. Dennis Lockton, the timekeeper, Mr. Harry Foxall from Stoke-on-Trent, and the referee in charge of the action, uh, one of Britain's leading star class referees, uh, Mr. Marcus McDonald of London. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, sponsored by Candor Sports, Fred Betting and Red Square, UK presents in association with A-Force Promotions, uh, an international heavyweight contest over six three-minute rounds. Between and introducing, firstly, finding out of the blue corner, we're in the gray trunks trimmed with black, coming from Alabama in the United States of America. He weighed in at 16 stone, nine pound, and holds a 15 fight professional record. 12 wins, 11 wins coming by way of KO with three losses. Please welcome from America, Wade Lewis! And ladies and gentlemen, standing across the ring in the red corner, wearing the white trunks, trimmed with red and a royal blue, coming from Wembley in London, weighing in at 18 stone and one pound. He's undefeated as a professional. Six perfect wins coming from six contests. Three wins coming by way of knockout. He's the former Olympic gold medalist. Please welcome the undefeated orderly Apos Harrison. Marcus McDonald, the referee, will now give his instructions to both boxers. Folks, about the dressing room, you know what I expect. I expect you to be at like professionals at all times. You understand me, Harrison? You understand me, Lewis? Good luck about you. Let's get it on. For the first round. Lots of smoke, lots of razzmatazz, a fire alarm going off, the smoke has cleared, and the vision of this ring is now just about perfect. Audi Harrison, his seventh professional contest, the 2000 Olympic Super Heavyweight Champion, in against a man from uh, Tuscaloosa in Alabama in the United States of America, by 32 years of age, a man who plays chess, is involved in a wholesale clothing business, and boxed as well, and he's won Wade Lewis. So Harrison, this massive sidepaw, six feet six, some four inches taller than his opponent, and weighing in at just over 18 stones, a little bit heavier than he was last time out when he met uh, Dominic Negus in July in Wembley. Good shot by Harrison against a man who uh, was stopped in one round a couple of fights ago. Harrison with the left again. This is what Harrison has to be doing, Richie. Yeah, definitely. He's got the height and reach here, and. Uh... He's using it to good effect, very crisp with the jab and he's bringing, coming through with that left hand and that's a lovely one, another shot, straight left from Harrison. Much better from him, early, nice and sharp, which is good. And he's Harrison's third American opponent. And I think this man could well go the way of the others. Mike Middleton was stopped in the round. Julius Long was stopped in a couple. Lewis straight away, he just can't get past that, that jab and uh, the left hand certainly give him a lot of problems when he's got to start throwing, he's got to start throwing much more right hands and also the left hooks, but uh, Harrison totally in command with that jab and those long straight lefts. Lewis looking very wary at that left hand that Harrison's going to bring over if he certainly can. He did it with that, Mike Middleton, the very good effect and just one round in his debut, there it is again. Nicely delivered by Harrison. Very often he doesn't get the full force of that 18 stones behind. He tends to punch a little bit from the from the elbow downwards instead of getting the full shoulder behind. Well, occasionally, but uh, all cool to me. That's a lovely shot. Love that tracking punch. Up. Not a big sweeping punch, but a perfectly delivered punch. And Lewis is 
down. Marcus McDonald is in front of him. He says, I'm fine. And Harrison just shortened it beautifully. Got himself caught and responded very quickly. And this is much better from Harrison. He needs this sort of a workout. But he needs this sort of victory. And he needs to show that he can cope with decent boxers in double quick time. How good Lewis is, well, his record tells us. This is uh, 16 professional contest. He's only lost three. And he's only been stopped once in those three defeats. Yeah, Lewis himself very slow with his own right hand. And um, Audley certainly taking advantage and a lot sharper. But that was a great first round from Audley Harrison, you've got to say. And uh, a lovely, perfect timing with that left hand. Tracking shot. And finish it off with a nice little variation to the body. So Harrison will be very pleased with that. Last couple of contests against cruiserweights, Mark Krentz and Dominic Negus. He struggled a little bit, but no such problems here. That was the shot. Reacted beautifully, moved out of the way of his opponent's right hand and uh, hit him spot on with a very good shot left. Sweet little shot from Harrison. Lewis swung and missed, and Harrison reacted very quickly, and there was a lot of shoulder and venom behind that, Rich. Yeah, that was great boxing, you know, he, he avoided his opponent's shot, and then um, he came across with his own left hand and, and stuck his man down. I mean, that's excellent Four stuff. But the timing was the, was the key to it, perfect timing. Well, Harrison has always had for a huge man, really terrific hand speed. And it's all about developing that hand speed and allowing it to his weight and strength and power. So Wade Lewis just about survived the first round. Can the man from Tuscaloosa, Alabama survive the second? If Harrison has anything to do with it, well, one thinks not. Oh! Thank you and good night. He says I'm fine. I don't know that Marcus McDonald agrees. Hugely experienced referee is going to let him go on that's two great shots there's another one one more is definitely going to do it marcus mcdonald is looking at that hapless way to it's all over he won't even bother counting harrison has done exactly what he needed to do and it doesn't matter about the opponent if we look back at lennox lewis and frank bruno and gary mason and look at the men they fought at this stage of their careers they were stopping him in one rounds and two rounds and three rounds and Audrey Harrison has done exactly what he needed to do at this stage of his career. Well, against this calibre of opposition, that's that's what you expect from the, the Olympic champion. There's no doubt about it. You know, and he's, he's proved it tonight that he's uh, got good punching power. His timing was excellent. It was a much better Audrey for me tonight here. And uh, a man, can, you can only beat with what's put in front of you. And that, that was a good victory. You can't, you can't knock Audrey for this. The punches were great, hard and powerful, and his opponent couldn't recover. Well, the shot in the first round really told the story of this contest. And Harrison's hardly had time to uh, put the gloves on before Kenny Croom and Thel Torrance, who'll be delighted with them, are taking them off. And that was a, a very, very spectacular end by Harrison. And that's what he needs to do. Well, this is how the end came. Good work by Harrison. Terrific foot speed for such a big man. And that left hand came out straight away. And Lewis nearly cartwheeled out of the ring. It was a great finish by uh, Audley Harrison. Moved nicely again, and that left hand was delivered perfectly. These are really good left hands when put in by Harrison. This is as good as he's been. Yeah, he just, you know, he moved out, moved out of position and, and avoided his opponent's shot, and then he come, came across with his own left hand. Good boxing, excellent boxing. The timing was perfect, and the power, obviously, for Wade Lewis, he, he couldn't stand up from those punches. Yeah, look at Lewis, his eyes were completely gone. He's not really relishing this at all. Harrison moves sweetly, and that was a terrifically accurately delivered left hand, and down he went like a sack of old spuds. Audley, many congratulations. Uh, that was short and sweet. What was your verdict? Yeah, yeah, I've been, uh, you know, working on improving my speed and working on my conditioning, working on my power, and, uh, you know, I was able to open him up and, uh, you know, my left cross, and I was able to bring it in. You know, everyone knows... I've got, a, I've got a powerful left cross when I want to let it go, and uh, you know, I was able to line him up on it and uh, just take my time and just, and just work for that knockout. And the punches, as soon as you threw them, you knew that was good night. We can show you them. Have a look at this and talk us through. Yeah, you know, I was fainting with the jab, like Phil was saying, use the fate of the jab, step back, counter. You know, that's a, that's a clean left cross, and uh, as you see what happened, it was had a dramatic effect because, um, 
you know, I was walking him onto the shots. You know, everyone says I'm a counter puncher, but when you when you when you can faint and uh, walk people onto shots, you know, that's the kind of effect. You know, and again, a never clean left cross. And you know, if you hit in the heavyweight division, you hit people clean on the chin. That's what happens. You know, it has a dramatic effect. And uh, you know, a never knockout victory for a, a guy who can't punch. So uh, you know, I'm happy to move it along and just keep keep bringing the fighters on and keep learning. What would you have learned from four minutes of boxing tonight? Would you have liked it actually to go sort of three or four rounds and knocks him out in the fourth round? Because just just explain what you learn from a fight like that, Audley. Well, the first thing is, you know, you 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 don't get paid for overtime in boxing. It's one of them sports where you try and get rid of your opponents as soon as possible. I've trained very hard in training. You don't look for the knockout. You look to work behind the game plan. But, you know, you get a bonus when you work hard, and I've worked hard in training, and my bonus was an early knockout. You know, most of the hard work in this stage of my career is done in the gym. You know, these kind of, these opponents are tough. They're coming out, they're trying to beat the Olympic champion. But, you know, if I get it done in one round, two rounds, the learning's taking place because there's a game plan to implement, and I implement it, and it caused me a second round knockout. And you genuinely feel that was a step up from your last one, do you? Definitely. I mean, at the end of the day, every time I've boxed somebody, after I've boxed them, they've turned out to be a bum. At the end of the day, Dominic Negus was supposedly a good fighter before I went in with him. Mark Crinch was supposedly a good fighter. Will, will people say that about this guy? They're going to say that about every guy. At the end of the guy, this guy's had 10 knockouts. He can knock people out. And uh, I was able to implement my game plan and, and, and take him out and move on. When will you step up to eight rounds? Uh, not sure. You know, something you to speak to uh, Colin about. But we're, we're looking at it. At the end of the day, I've had seven fights. In Lennox Lewis's seventh fight, he boxed a six-rounder. He, he topped the bill in Berthnell Green in his sixth fight. Vladimir Klitschko in his sixth fight, he was in six rounders. So I'm not doing anything different to other Olympic champions. And, uh, you know, we're still looking here. We move on as, as is right. Danny Williams was saying to us uh, beforehand, he's working ringside, that he, that he thinks now you should step up in class. And he's perhaps surprised that you haven't done it before. What okay. would you say to that one? Well, what I'll say to that is anyone who follows boxing, they'll know that Danny Williams has been a professional for seven years and he's still got the British title. So Danny should be the last person who should tell me I should be speeding up because he's still got the British title after seven years. I've been a pro for 16 months, and I'm not too far the British title level. Obviously, conditioning-wise, those guys have got some economy because they can do the 12 rounds, but they've been a professional for seven years. I've it's been a professional for 16 months. That's what people need to realise, and I'm taking my time. Interesting to say you're not too far from the, 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 the British title. In terms of ability, in terms of ability, I'm not too far, and that's the God's honest truth. People can, you know, criticise and they can say, Harrison shouldn't be talking. You know, those who are in earnest ain't afraid of the consequences. I'm not afraid to put my neck on the line and say, I believe I can go all the way. And those people who want to say Harrison talks too much, Harrison shouldn't be talking. The bottom line is I'm going to still be here in three, four years' time, still winning well, and still doing what I do. Well, that's good to know. But just answer this question. When might you fight uh, a Michael Sprott, one of those sort of characters, guys that are sort of uh, ranked just above you? Yeah, that's right. They're ranked just above me. You know, Dominic Negus was what, ranked one behind me. Mark Crench was ranked so two when, behind me. Just to answer the question, when might you actually fight Did you read the program? It, I, I haven't, I, but let, let, let's get it from the horse's mouth. Listen, it will be a program. Talk to Colin, man. Don't talk to me. Well, you're, you're, you're the boxer. I'll have a word with the manager, Colin right, McMillan. But just tell us. Opponent. All right, let's, let's, let's bring Colin McMillan in. When, when, when do you think, Colin, he might fight sort of a, a Michael, Michael Sprott character? I mean, all of those guys, they're on the agenda. We're looking at them, hopefully, in the next you know, three or four fights. But we've had, you know, we've had too long. Will he be fighting that kind of guy? But yeah. at the moment, this the before. It's a learning curve, you know. And his next fight will it be against? Can you tell us that? No, we're not too sure yet at the moment. Still thinking, you know, going to analyse the performance today. A couple of guys we've got on, you know, on the on, on plan on the plan. So, um, you know, hopefully there'll be another guy who can, you know, show what all he's worked on in the gym. Another guy we can learn, develop. And as I say, all is a long way from becoming a complete fighter. It takes a lot of time, and there's no short route to, you know, to the top. Yeah. And you genuinely believe in your heart of hearts that he is totally on course to, to go on to do great things, Colin? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, if you look at the career of um, Lennox Lewis, Vladimir Klitschko, Ray Murtha, if you look at who those guys were fighting in their, ten, their first ten fights, all he has surpassed that. You know, he's well on track. People have got to realise there's no short route to, the work, to become a world champion. You know, we've all, I've done it myself. You've got to go for that learning curve. You've got to get the right kind of fight to develop, to learn. And like today, you fought a guy who had twice as many fights, and he's able to get the job done in quick time. Uh, a final uh, thought, like you say, the, the people will probably say this chap that you uh, met tonight was a bit of a bum. Um, Danny Williams has given a, a view on you. Does that, after a while, get on your nerves? Do you get fed up with it? It doesn't get on my nerves at all. All I've got to say to all my fans, all your friends who are criticizing me, stick with me, stay with me. Don't let them put you off. Believe in Audley Harrison because I'm going all the way. And I just want to say big respect to all my fans, big respect to all the people who came here today and just believe in me. It doesn't get on my nerves one bit. So stand strong for Audley Harrison because Audley Harrison is going all the way. Believe in that.